Good evening. Uh, it's April 6th, uh, and we'll call the meeting of the Senate Finance and Policy, Education Finance and Policy Committee to order. Today up, we will have Senate File 4113, Senator Chamberlain, and I believe you have an amendment, sir? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, members, A1 Authors Amendment. Senator Chamberlain offers the uh, A1 Authors Amendment. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the motion does prevail. To your bill as amended, Senator Chamberlain. Uh, members, uh, Mr. Chair, members, this is the bill we discussed on Monday and took testimony on. It is a literacy intensive, literacy focused bill, five uh, components. Just a quick reminder first part is suspending world's best workforce to focus on literacy. Secondly, is to uh, support and give funds to regional centers uh, to add additional support for literacy and dyslexia throughout Minnesota, and we provide funding for that. Next is we strike one word from statute, the word balanced. We don't need that anymore because the science of reading is the way to teach reading. And uh, next we have, lastly we have, oh, next is the Pelsby requirement. Uh, it wasn't clear, so we required them to uh, have the candidates for K-5 elementary ed to take uh, letters. They had not been doing that to those teachers and they were left behind. And finally, the appropriation for letters to $30 million to cover all K-5, uh, K-5 plus. That's it. All right, thank you, Senator Chamberlain. So now for discussion on Senate File 4113 as amended the K-12 Omnibus <coughs> Appropriations Bill. I have Senator Isaacson first on my list. Just real quick, could you tell me what the A-1 amendment was? I know we passed it, but I don't, what did we just pass? Senator Chamberlain? We just passed the A-1 uh, author's amendment. The, was it just I technical just, or? No, I just explained it, Senator Isaacson. <laughs> it's that short, Senator Isaacson. <laughs> Uh, next up, I have Senator Weger. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Chamberlain. And uh, I do, uh, we do support the investment in literacy. In fact, I uh, would recommend even additional funding, and we'll have an opportunity to discuss that later. Uh, but this is an omnibus. Senator Weger, I think they're having a hard time hearing you. You might want to get a little closer okay. to the mic. But you know, this is an omnibus appropriation bill. And we have a nine and a quarter billion dollar surplus, and this is 0.3% uh, percent of that. Uh, it does not meet the moment in terms of the needs, the critical needs that are, have been expressed to us by students, by parents, uh, teachers, staff, school board members. Yes, literacy is very important, but we can do much more. We have to do much more. And starting first with the mental health needs. Pre-COVID, this was priority one. Now, it's a crisis. And the need for additional counselors, for nurses, for social workers, psychologists, there's waiting lists just if you can even get access for help right now. Uh, so the need for additional funding for social, emotional, mental health needs. Also, we have a crisis in staffing for teachers. We have a record number that are leaving the profession. We've had testimony on that. Uh, bus drivers trying to recruit, in fact, and it goes through the whole you know, staff team where there's been significant challenges. And uh, we have to meet the moment on the significant challenge of the teacher shortage and staffing shortage, staff burnout, and what we can do to make this honorable you know, profession as attractive as possible. Uh, we need to invest more resources there. Special education. This has been identified by all the major groups, including parents and students in terms, and that would be 17% approximately of Minnesota students are in special ed. But we have $800 million shortfall in terms of meeting that obligation, an important obligation. But that's why we have that, that cross-subsidy now, 800 million. English language learners, 
about a $125 million shortfall on the cross-subsidy. That needs to be addressed. We need to meet the moment and the needs that we've heard. The formula. Yes, there's been discussion by many of the organizations, the groups representing parents, the PTA. We'll start with them. We need to keep pace with inflation. We all know what we're going through right now in our country. School boards, they need to balance a budget. And if we don't provide additional assistance in the formula, there will be cuts. In fact, they're going on right now. Pink slips are being prepared. We have not kept pace with inflation. And it's not my allegation. This is what school boards have told us. And if you, we can go through, uh, if you need, as to what are projected deficits in many districts, many of them rural, by the way, there is a need to address these funding needs. So, yes, we need to do more in literacy, and we're going to offer some additional suggestions. Uh, some parts of your uh, work, uh, you know, Senator Chamberlain, I strongly support. And, and again, I appreciate that. But there is so much more that needs to be done. Education, students are our future. This is the biggest part of our state budget, but 0.3%. We can do so much better. We need to. Uh, Governor Walls has offered a vision. You'll have a chance to vote on that as well. So those are my opening comments. And we will have several amendments. And you might wonder, well, why at this point do we have to have all these amendments? We've had 19 meetings. 19 meetings. And uh, Senator Swedinsky is the only person in the minority that's had a hearing on a bill. Senator Kunish has not had a hearing in committee since she's become a senator. Senator Isaacson has not had a hearing. I haven't had a hearing in two years. And this is our only opportunity to present some of these ideas before they would probably be ruled as not germane once we got to the floor with this tight of a bill, which we know you can pass. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Chamberlain. Um, well, it's not a solve every problem bill. Every bill that comes up here, we hear the same story about solving all these problems. It's not a solve every problem bill. Just incidentally, Governor Waltz last year after he signed the, signed the bill, he went around the state, uh, he said this was, he was celebrating, quote, celebrating historic investments in education, unquote, Governor Waltz. In 2013, there was a newspaper, a, a quote, uh, best bill ever and historic funding. So we keep doing that. Senator, Governor Waltz liked the bill last year. It's not a budget year this year. 6% um, increase last year. Uh, the the, um, the um, special ed went up $300 million. It's a 15-year 15 15 high on the, uh, on the formula, 6% increase overall. The... Um, Special ed funding went up last year. Yeah, there's a lot of challenges and problems out there. Absolutely. Uh, but we can't solve them all in one shot. Can't do anything if you're not reading. We spent a lot of money. The governor liked the bill last year, historic funding. Um, schools lost students, and they're going to lose revenue if they lose students. So, um, you know, it... <laughs> You know, maybe we wouldn't be here if uh, a few years back um, <coughs> a little more attention had been paid to this literacy issue. Uh, parents worked hard, and it was bipartisan for years. Uh, don't know why it took eight, nine years to get where we're at and finally get the letters stuff out last year. Nonetheless, no need to look back. We are here, we made it, and we need to plow forward. 40% of the students in this state K-12 
cannot read at grade level. Um, that's overall. Native Americans at 20%, 6% grade level. Um, Hispanic, Latino, about the same. Black or African American, they're about the same. <laughs> it's horrendous. It really is terrible. So um, I find that focusing on literacy and getting kids to read is opportunity. It's focusing on results. We don't want to fund administrations. We want to focus on results. This letters program, this focus on literacy, has got support across the state uh, from individual educators and districts. They understand the importance of it, and the success they're having comes to me either uh, comes to me a lot on one-on-ones and and um, uh, casual conversation. They're seeing results. So, literacy results. This year, it's not a budget year. It's a great time to focus on this piece to address these serious problems in reading and literacy for our kids and for our educators, by the way, who are shortchanged. And um, we'll look forward to a big new budget next year. But we had a big budget last year. The governor loved it. Uh, he touted it. So I'll go with that. Senator Weger. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Senator Chamberlain, for applauding Governor Walls and going with it. And I it was our budget. <laughs> and, I, and I want to remind you, uh, or you can answer it, uh, yes or no, was your target zero last year? Uh, Senator Chamberlain. I, I, since you're going to go down that path, I'll happy to dance with you, Uyghur, Senator Uyghur. Um, uh, I remember kids being left in, for the last five minutes of a hearing to hear rocking and reading. I remember parents being told that my bill wasn't going to be, uh, the literacy bill wasn't going to be supported because uh, I didn't support one of somebody else's legislation. Um, last year we started at three and two and a half. That's where the Republican Senate started with theirs. And, and the House and the governor came in at like one, one and a half. We drove that up. And we kept the mandates out of the bill. We drove it up, kept the mandates out of the bill. So if you want to go down that path, we can do that for a while. I'd rather just have a pleasant chat about a good bill that will really address a problem and achieve results. So we came in with a high number, and we stayed high. They held us, to, and they wanted to come down to two, one and a half. So we did it. The governor went around. I was glad he did. I'm glad we got it. I'm glad we didn't get any mandates. But uh, if you want to play, one reason this whole thing has got sideways over the years and our kids have been left behind is because this very thing, Senator Weger, politics, stinking, rotten, ugly politics they have left our kids and our educators behind. So what I'm suggesting with this bill, no politics, pure, clean, easy, simple. Our kids can't read. We should be able to do that this year without the politics. This has gotten sideways over the years because of agendas and politics. That's why those kids can't read. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, we gave good money and good, didn't give mandate relief last year and that's what this is. So I just suggest we put the politics aside and keep those kids in our mind and they'll have great success in a few years. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna move on. Senator Isaacson. Well, uh, Senator Chamberlain, I suggest if we're going to have a conversation like that, you probably should stick with me because you shouldn't go up to his level. Let's be clear about this. Uh, it is, I'm incredulous to hear you make the claim about, oops, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm incredulous to hear you make the claim about politics after I sat through what I sat through today and on Wednesday or on, on Monday. Uh, that, that just is beyond the pale. But when I look at your bill, you, you want a pleasant discussion about politics because you don't want us to point out how absolutely insufficient and a failure this bill is when it meets the need. And to make the argument that because it's not a budget year, that suddenly now, that's an okay reason not to solve the problems in front of us. And as you said, this isn't to solve every problem bill. Well, then what the heck have we been doing here all session? That's our job, Senator Chamberlain. And this bill is, 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 is like getting one yard at 4th and 45. Yeah, you're doing something important lit with literature and I, literacy, and I don't disagree with you. I don't think we're, we don't we don't disagree on that. We need to have better <coughs> movement on literacy. 
but there is so much more. And then you talked about the governor did not support your bill initially as you presented it. Let's be really clear about that. The governor supported the final product that was negotiated. So I, I don't <laughs> put words in the governor's mouth. And <clears throat> when you talk about increases, we did do some good increases last time. There is no question about it, and I'm happy that we did it. But it was woefully insufficient to what increases were needed over the last 20 years, right? And so I really get tired of hearing people talk about how we've made historic investments every year when we're still not making investments that put schools where they need to be. If we made such good improvements, why are schools having to get pink slips? Why are teachers still in trouble and suffering? And we're not providing enough support to our schools. That's the problem. So if we're not giving them enough to actually buy what they need, we're not actually solving the problem. And this bill does nothing to address any of that, despite the fact that there's a $9 billion surplus that it gives us plenty of opportunity to make some changes. So um, to suggest that this should be a pleasant conversation when I have such an unpleasant bill, uh, I'm sorry that you're going to be disappointed most of the evening. Well, Mr. Chair and Senator Mr. Isaacson, I'm sorry people feel that way about literacy. <laughs> um, I truly am. Uh, so I, I won't repeat everything I, I already said. It stands on its own. It's reading. Reading has been put aside for years. Our own agencies and organizations have failed to uh, enforce the law per statute. Teachers are left shortchanged, meaning the kids were left out in the cold. How different of this would this be if that organization had done their job? So. I uh, can't solve all the problems. Uh, it'll be the same thing over and over. But I know the kids, if they're not reading, they can't do anything else. I just <laughs> oh, by the way, I'll say, I forgot to mention, we have a mental health bill running on another. Someone else has a, is carrying a mental health bill. And our safe schools bill is still out there as well. So, and that has mental health issue, uh, money in it as well. Thank you, Senator Chamberlain. Senator Swadzinski. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have the end members. I have the A2, amend A A2 amendment. A2. Senator Swadzinski. A21. <coughs> A21, Senator Swadzinski? Yes, I two believe. Two or 21. So. It could be one of those two. A look, <laughs> look for both of them. A2, well, we, A21 amendment. We can only take one at a time. A21. I'm going with A21. All right, A21 it is. Bingo. <laughs> Senator Swadzinski offers the A21 amendment. We'll give a moment for staff to pass that amendment out, and then we'll go to Senator Chamber. Or we'll go to Senator Swadzinski to explain it, and then to Senator Chamberlain for his comment on it. Go ahead, Senator Swadzinski. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. The amendment before you requires that all schools provide um, in grades four through 12 at no cost to the students <laughs> menstrual products and school bathrooms. I ho hope that um, you see this as a friendly amendment, ensuring that all students have access to basic hygiene products they need is the right thing to do. We passed this unanimously um, a while back in this committee, and but the best thing we can do is to ensure that this um, becomes law, um, is to include it here as well, I believe. It is unfortunate reality that so many of our students can't afford um, um, feminine hygiene products often, and they end up missing valuable school time. Schools currently provide um, free soap and free paper towels and um, uh, other bathroom supplies, and yet um, so many young girls are penalized for just simply being young girls. The bottom line is the co cost should not be a burial to menstrual products. There's strong public support for this bill. The total bill is um, $1.9 million, which comes out to be $2 per child. $2 per child in order for our young menstruating population to not have the shame and embarrassment that they forgot some money at home for the, um, the, the machine or they forgot their um, feminine hygiene products at home. And so I think this bill would send a great message to an, um, half of our student population that menstruates. And if we could get this unanimously passed um, I, as a friendly amend amendment, I'd really <coughs> appreciate it, as would um, half, the, well, hopefully all the students in Minnesota schools. Thank you, Senator Swadzinski. Also, as a reminder, this bill did pass this committee and is uh, still alive, I believe, in the Finance Committee. Senator Chamberlain? I'll take it. That's fine. What's that? I'll take it. Senator Chamberlain says it'll accept it as a friendly amendment. Any additional discussion to this bill before we vote? Seeing none, all those in favor of the A21 <coughs> amendment say aye. 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 All opposed? The A21 amendment is adopted.
Any additional questions or comments from members? I, I have the A34 amendment or A3. No kidding, <laughs> 34, I was trying to be playful at this late stage of the evening. A34. Senator, Senator Swazinski okay. offers the A34 amendment. Uh, if staff could pass that out, please, and if, if you know what it is exactly, if yeah. you want to start describing it, that could okay. speed things along. For You've us. heard me present both um, these parallel bills in the past. One deals with, um, um, and this bill did pass in the House with bipartisan support already. What this bill does, it, it's, it takes civic education and financial literacy education in order to prepare our young people and giving them the knowledge and the necessary tools for to, to be active participants in the 21st century. Too many of our kids are growing up and graduating high school out knowing how to manage their own finances or know the tools needed to participate in our um, the great experiment in democracy, which is America. Knowing about things like student debt and home ownership and paying your college debt and voting and how, how a bill becomes a law 101 are um, essential elements in um, for all of us, in, most and most importantly, our youth. In past this amendment, we are better equip equipping our students for success and helping to both strengthen our democracy and strengthening our economy. Um, I, this is just a baseline for understanding of financial literacy in American government. It's my hope that we will take this as a friendly amendment. Again, I just want to um, urge the members and the chair that this did pass the House um, with bipartisan <coughs> support with two members of the House committee opposed to it. So I stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Chamberlain, have you received the amendment? I did. Okay, perfect. To the amendment. So, in general, I get it. I like civics, but I'm not going to take a bill that imposes additional mandates and, and burdens on districts at this time. It's a good idea. I get it. But there's, we just talked about how they're trying to catch up and the challenges they're having. We kept most, almost all mandates off the bill last year. This bill here, I think, has none. We relieve them of one big one, and I'm not uh, supporting this amendment. The districts don't uh, want to do it right now. Um, they can do it already if they'd like, but I don't want to put the mandate on them. Additional discussion to the A34? Yeah. I, I, Senator Swadzinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I asked for a roll call vote, and I just want to remind everybody that, um, that the, the current graduation requirements <coughs> does require three and a half credits in soul studies, and one of those credits is for civics um, education possibility, and that one of those credits required is currently economics. This bill suggests that as an alternative um, to the econ class, macro and micro, they could take personal finance. Any additional discussion to the A30? Well, a34 amendment, and I'll take one step back first. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the <coughs> roll on the A34 amendment. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weger? No. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadzinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. <coughs> Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? No. Seeing, five eye, or seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Are there any additional questions or amendments to the bill? Seeing not, Senator Kunesh? Yes. I have the, um, the, the uh, A2 amendment, please. Senator Kunish offers the A2 amendment. If staff could please pass that out um, as they're coming, go ahead and start describing it to us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This uh, A2 amendment um, encourages schools to provide education on substance misuse and prevention, and it also uh, encourages schools to include information about social media's role in uh, distributing illegal drugs. Uh, Chair, um, Chair Chamberlain says that we can't do anything without reading, but right here and right now, we can do something about the very, very tragic uh, opioid and overdose uh, situation that we are finding ourselves in. It has been uh, years 
of, of tragedy for families. And uh, when Senator Bigham shared uh, this bill with us, she told us the story about Bridget Noring and other <coughs> members of our community who um, have reached out to, to talk to us about the awareness of fentanyl poisoning. When I uh, was first in the House, the very first bill that I ever carried was a bill to do just what this bill is doing. It is encouraging and um, providing the authority for schools to uh, cr create and provide education around these very tragedies, substance misuse um, and uh, the, the repercussions of what happens to them. I carried a bill called For Jake's Sake. It was, came to me from a mother who lost her son. It was a tragic story, and it's a, a story that way too many families are having to, to deal with. Recently, I had two different groups, two different pairs of loved ones that came to me and asked me to help them do something. They both lost a young man to, uh, to fentanyl, and it breaks my heart. When you hear these stories, it is overwhelming. So yes, we can do something that is not connected to literacy here tonight. We can make a difference and allow and encourage those schools to be uh, including this kind of information uh, in their schools. Opioid overdoses have gone up over and over again. In 2019, 428 uh, overdoses. Heroin, synthetic opioids, um, all of these things are causing death uh, within our families. And this <coughs> bill uh, that, that Senator Bigham provided with, uh, to us not too long ago would allow just that. And so members, I would ask for a roll call and I would <coughs> ask Senator Chamberlain to please accept this bill, this amendment. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain to the A2. Uh, thank you. No, um, I get it. I believe a lot of schools are already doing this. And I don't know, where did this go? Is this still in this committee where it went to finance? Do you remember staff? We're having staff check on that real quick to know where it's currently um, at in the process. But it says strongly encouraged, but it's just another requirement on on uh, schools at this time. And I think schools are addressing the issue. Um, I'm understanding sympathetic, but I would say no at this time. It just leans towards another mandate, another requirement. And uh, schools are working on this and diligent with it already. Senator Chamberlain, at this time, that bill was laid over. Okay, thank you. That's where it's at in the process. Any additional comments to the A2 amendment? Senator Swadzinski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to lend my wholehearted support for this bill, um, this amendment. It's, um, our kids are hurting pretty bad these days, and I think that a lot of them, uh, many of them, are starting to self-medicate and uh, and because they just don't know, they don't have the knowledge. They, we, we haven't done a, maybe a, as good of a job educating them of the misuse and abuse of um, of self-medicating and taking um, taking medicine when they shouldn't be. And uh, so I, I, I had a lot of former students in their early 20s uh, um, <coughs> lost their lives. And um, boy, I tell you, it, it, it's, a pretty, it's pretty horrible to have that happen. Um, it's like losing a finger in some cases. And uh, so I hope in my time here in the Minnesota Senate, <coughs> we um, make this um, issue just go away because we figured it out. So thank you, um, Senator Kunish, for bringing this forward. Senator Duckworth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a question for the uh, author of the amendment. Um, are schools already able to do what's in this amendment? Senator Kunish. I believe there are opportunities within the school districts, but um, this one um, also includes uh, school districts and charter schools. Uh, we often are not addressing the, uh, the um, impact of social media 
on students as well. And so uh, this one encourages them to provide that evidence-based substance and um, especially to use those peer-to-peer -peer education programs. Uh, as, a, as a sixth grade classroom teacher back a long time ago, I was uh, the health teacher. None of the other sixth grade teachers <laughs> wanted to do that, so it fell to me. And part of that was around uh, recognizing substance abuse and addiction. And uh, I, I can, we can look in a book, we can read the stories, uh, but it's really those stories from uh, uh, their peers, those that have perhaps survived an overdose um, or who have been affected by uh, this pandemic of, of overdosing and, and death. Uh, and so this bill encourages those sort of things. And um, if ever a school is in question whether uh, they have the authority to do something like this, this bill would provide um, that base for, for uh, addressing the issue. Senator Duckworth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Senator Kunish. Um, I've got no doubt that it's very well intentioned. Um, <clears throat> I guess I just I think that schools are doing a lot of this already, which is great. I commend them for doing it. Um, I'm not sure that the, uh, the amendment is needed um, if this is something that schools all across the state are already able to do and are already doing. So that's all I've got, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Isaacson. Mr. Chair, uh, I'm not certain that of the veracity of what Senator Duckworth speaks. I'm not sure that this is being done, and I'm certain that it's not being done the way it's being suggested by Senator Kunish. And as someone who's lived his life in recovery for the last 30 years, I can tell you the only thing that we understand when it comes to, well, not the only, one of the only things we understand when it comes to recovery is the most effective way to get somebody out of that spiral is to have somebody else who's been in it before, who's walked that path, fell into that hole, and got out of it again. And that's why I think this is so important, because it creates um, that kind of connection of people who've actually been in that situation before. I can speak from personal experience and having worked with other people who have suffered from addiction, that it's the folks that have walked down that path that provide the most insight, the most opportunity, and perhaps the most success to finding their way out of addiction. And I think that's just really essential. And, and so I, I hope that we can support this amendment. Thank you. <coughs> Additional questions for members. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. <coughs> Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadzinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? Nope. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? No. Seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Back to Senate File 4113 as amended. Additional questions, comments, or amendments? Senator Kunish. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to um, uh, discuss the A18 amendment. Senator Kunish offers the A18 amendment. If staff could please pass that out, go ahead and start describing it to us while they do so. Uh, thank you. This bill um, is really near and dear to my heart. And again, even though this is not a budget year, Chair Chamberlain, we can um, put some good policy into our, into our statute. And this addresses and defines school libraries and media centers. I was a library media specialist at an elementary school and then a middle school for 20 years. And um, if there's anything that supports literacy, it is our libraries and and our library media specialist. Uh, this bill um, uh, states that a school district or a charter school library or school library media center provides equitable and free access to students, teachers, and administrators. A school library or a school library media center is defined as having the following characteristics. And that's what we're doing here. We're putting this definition into statute. It ensures that every student has equitable access to resources and is able to locate, access, and use resources that are organized and cataloged. I think that's really important that they can access and use those resources. It's one thing to put an encyclopedia, which most of us don't have anymore in our classrooms or books, but how do you use that? It also um, 
uh, defines it as a collection development plan that includes but is not limited to material selection and deselection. Oftentimes there are a lot of old books in our libraries that are just gathering dust and, and have old information. Boundary lines in, in states change, um, ru uh, presidents and rulers and politics and geography, there are changes. So it um, defines that those, those selections are deselected and that we provide challenging materials um, and allowing for intellectual and academic freedom. Uh, we want to make sure that these libraries are housed in a central location that provides an environment for expanded learning and supporting a variety of student interests. Internet access is absolutely vital along with technology. And if you are a licensed media specialist, your responsibility, especially um, in a lot of the elementary schools, is to provide all of the technology instruction for the students. So I was teaching uh, kindergartners through fifth graders all the technology. I had first and second graders creating PowerPoints and presenting their findings to the rest of, uh, to the rest of their class and able to discuss it and, and rebut their uh, questions and provide ac accurate resources. And um, it's also um, want to have our libraries and media centers served by licensed library media specialists who continue with professional development um, and uh, do this in a way that, that is going to enforce and, and promote um, literacy as Chair uh, Chamberlain is so um, passionate about. Uh, since 1983 members, April has been observed as the school library month. So we are sitting right here, right now in um, school library month. Libraries are an integral part to the quality education programs. We provide students with the skills that they need to access and use that information, providing a wide variety of necessary education uh, materials, not just books, but magazines, digital resources, um, online resources, how to access them and re really find out, dig down to make sure that they are authentic sites and not just um, uh, information that isn't is not true or factual and so uh, we know through the practices that full potential of school libraries is really dependent on those trained professional such as libraries uh, media specialists who have that variety so chair Chamberlain I would I would request that you um, accept this definition of school library and library media specialists um, three 33.6 million students in districts where all or some of our schools have library media specialists. The majority of those schools are white and they have low poverty. But there are another 7.5 million who are in districts where there are no schools that have library media specialists. And of those 7.5 million students, 64% of them have been without librarians since 2015. 64% are in a majority of non-white districts, so they are not getting this kind of literacy um, support. 58.7 are in high poverty districts who either do not have libraries or licensed library media specialists to provide the curriculum necessary. And uh, so uh, with that, I would like to once again uh, request that Chair Chamberlain accept this amendment, and I would ask for a roll call. Roll call requested. Roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain to the A18. I would oppose this amendment. It's, I haven't heard of it before today at this moment, and it really isn't needed. I, I don't get the point. Um, it's not needed. And I haven't heard it before tonight, so I'd oppose it. Any additional questions, Senator Kunish? Um, I, I would like to just respond in that um, I did put in a number of requests to have this bill heard, and it was not heard in this committee. Um, this bill is, is not a mandate, but it articulates a standard and it helps the state disseminate federal funding through the Institute of Museums and Library Services. So there's opportunity to bring additional funding and resources into our schools uh, with this definition <coughs> in our statutes. Senator Kunish, I, I'm curious, did you 
ask for some kind of fiscal note on this at all. I'm just curious what the cost might be to our schools. Looking at line 1.16, there could be some concern that there's an unfunded mandate for the schools, and we certainly don't want to put any other mandates on them. So do you know about what the cost would be? Um, are you, let me find that. Well, if, I mean, like, as you mentioned before, Senator Kunish, you know, some of these schools aren't going to have a licensed media specialist. They're going to have to hire that person. Um, they may have to mm -hmm. purchase other supplies. What, what is this going to cost each school to do is, is really the question. Well, this does not have a cost to the, to the state at all. It could have a, a cost to the districts in the, um, the salary of a licensed library media specialist. Okay, so potentially this could be an unfunded mandate for, for the school districts. I, that's what I was trying to clear up if, if you were aware what, what that cost was. I don't know what that position costs every year, what else would go into it, but that's what I was trying to drill down on. So any huh. additional questions? Seeing none, uh, there was a roll call requested and granted the... Uh, committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain. No. Senator Eichhorn. No. Senator Weaker. Yes. <coughs> Senator Coleman. No. Senator Swadzinski. Yes. Senator Duckworth. No. Senator Isaacson. Yes. Senator Kunesh. Yes. Senator Newman. Seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Any additional? Senator Weger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I offer the A15 amendment. Senator Weger offers the A15 amendment to the amendment while staff passes it out. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is the governor's budget proposal, which uh, we haven't had a chance to, to go through. I won't go through every item. In fact, Senator Chamberlain had offered to make this as an amendment. Uh, with the, <coughs> the thought that it would probably go down. So, but I won't go through every provision. I'll just highlight the provision about formula. Uh, the school districts have asked for additional funds. Layoff notices are, gonna, are being prepared <coughs> right now. And without additional money in the formula, uh, many people are going to lose their jobs. Uh, that is unconscionable in a, a time where we have a, a surplus and a time where the challenges are significant in our schools. There's money for early learning scholarships, pre-K uh, for uh, eligible four-year-old children, student support personnel, I mentioned the need for that earlier, uh, mental health screening, the uh, Grow Your Own program, uh, the importance of the cross-subsidy, addressing that in part for special ed, for <coughs> Uh, other provisions as well, uh, but I do want to note, uh, members, uh, Chair uh, Chamberlain, we do have the letters provision in here as well. I added that provision. Again, I support that. Uh, I think we had good testimony, uh, though, uh, from uh, Ed Minnesota saying if there could be some additional funds for teachers you know, for the time off. It is rigorous, and I get it. It's science-based. <coughs> support that, but... Uh, that is included. I did not include the provision, though, where you suspended parts of the world's best workforce. Uh, I think it's critically important that we have uh, information as to how well st the districts are doing for early uh, education, it, specifically our students ready for K, uh, addressing the opportunity gap, uh, graduation, college career readiness. Uh, the testimony, I believe, from Ed Allies demonstrated that. Also, the Minnesota Business Partnership uh, talked about the importance of having some uh, accountability measures. Readings, very important. Support that as well. But we can do all of these things together. So I ask for a roll call vote. Roll call requested on the A15. Roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain to the A15. Uh, no. Any additional comments, questions? Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? <coughs> yes. Senator Kunish? Yes. Senator Newman? Seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Additional comments, questions, amendments, Senator Isaacson? Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the A11 amendment. 
A11. A11. Senator Isaacson offers the A11 amendment. Go ahead and describe it to us while staff passes it out. Yep, the A11 amendment essentially uh, addresses the issue of the cross subsidy. Um, you know, we have about 822 million out there that is not being covered in the cross subsidy and it's a real opportunity for us here, which is less than 9% of our state surplus to wipe that out and take care of that. Um, we know that there's a responsibility by the federal government that is not being met, which is unfortunate. Uh, and we have this burden coming back to our schools, which is also unfortunate. And it's, uh, it's a really tough place to be in. And it's definitely going to be difficult for us not to have, to, for the schools not to have what they need to be successful. And we continue to not fund them at an adequate rate. And this is one way we can make up for that. And a couple of things I would note about that is uh, Senator Chamberlain, 10.2 million of this would go to White Bear Lake schools. Senator Icorn, 3.9 million would go to your schools in your area. Senator Wiegand, Wieger, excuse me, uh, ISD 622 would have 14 million going to there. Senator Duckworth, it'd be $15.7 million to your schools in Lakeville. I'm sure you would want to vote against that. Senator Swazinski, uh, we're looking at uh, 8 million in Eden Prairie. Senator Coleman has 9.6 million in Eastern Carver County. Uh, Senator Knish, it's uh, 5.9 million in Columbia Heights. Uh, Senator Newman, it's 2.9 million in Hutchinson Public Schools. And in Roseville area, it's 11 million. This is a chance to really try to make our districts whole. And on an issue that we think we all agree is difficult. And I realize it's got a, a price tag that probably isn't something my friends across the aisle want to take care of at this point. But I think this is one of those chances where we can really can make a difference uh, in helping solve that problem. And so, I would like to have a roll call on this, please. I'd love for you to take the amendment, but if not, I'd like a roll call requested. Roll call granted on the A11, Senator Chamberlain. Yeah, the cross subsidy is a problem, right? We all know that. Um, this will not fix that. Let's be clear, this doesn't fix anything. It's another band-aid that has proposed, been proposed year over year uh, in this, in this uh, on, the, on Capitol Hill here, Capitol Hill in St. Paul. This doesn't fix a problem. And it, it's not just a one-year fix, it's a forever in perpetuity. So um, this doesn't fix a problem. It might feel good to say this, but it doesn't fix anything. So um, I've been sharing with members and school districts that we get it, but um, throwing this money at it isn't gonna solve their problem. It'll be good for a year. and. And then we'll, it'll never go away. We'll never fix this, never. So I, I would ask too, why year over year it keeps going up? What is going on? I'd love to dive in and try to address this problem and fix it, but this won't fix it. This will just uh, per, uh, perpetuate the problem and keep it going and uh, it'll never be solved. So uh, I know. Mr. Ch Senator Weger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Chamberlain, are you suggesting that providing additional resources does not remedy the cross-subsidy issue? Senator so, Chamberlain? Yeah, Mr. Chair and members, you know, a while back when we were talking about the world's best workforce and everybody wanted things measured, and a friend of mine reminded me of a, something. It was, at that time, measuring, measuring something does not improve it. Um, bigger is not always better. So what has been done over the years here is throwing money at things. I'll go back to 13 again. Great spending, people were happy, the people who were in charge were incredibly happy, historic spending. It was gonna be, quote, a game changer, quote, a, gl a grand slam. Where are we today? So will money help some things? Nah, sure, but it doesn't fix the problem. You know, big things don't always mean better. Throwing money at things makes you feel good, but it doesn't fix it. Um, the surgeon doesn't need <laughs> a big cleaver. The surgeon uses scalpels and lasers. and So big things don't always solve problems. Throwing money at something doesn't solve a problem. So uh, it helps fix things perhaps temporarily, but you're not solving a problem. So uh, the idea that these large budgets and throwing money at something works is just uh, an illusion because if that was the case, 
uh, we would have been in paradise after 2013, and we weren't, and we're not. So no. Senator Isaacson. So, um, <clears throat> Senator Chamberlain, uh, you said 12 times this doesn't solve the problem. I would like you to elucidate for us why it doesn't solve the problem. Because I if you look at you. question, no, you did not. If you look at question one point, line 1 1.9, it talks about taking care of this <coughs> going forward. The reality is, is that there is an expenditure in our schools that costs money, right? And because inflation is real, <coughs> it goes up every year, right? And so we have an opportunity here to pay that amount so it doesn't put the burden back on the school district. So I'm trying to understand when we offer the money to pay the outstanding amount, and then we pay that outstanding amount, where is there a problem not being solved? So I'd like you to explain to me, how does it not solve the problem? Just saying it over and over again doesn't make it true. Mr. Senator Chair, Chamberlain? I would vote no on the amendment. Any additional discussion? I'm, I'm not done. Senator Isaacson? Oh, yeah. So I, I find it frustrating, because this is a classic tactic I've seen in this committee by the chair to say things over and over again without actually explaining them. And I want to be clear about this. I'm not trying to pick on the chair. I'm trying to point out there is a real problem with the cross-subsidy. We are not paying for it. The federal government's not paying for it. The school districts are paying for it. We have a $9B billion surplus. I don't care if it's a budgeting year or not a budgeting year. We have an opportunity to solve a problem for our schools that our schools are begging us to solve. Senator Chamberlain's right. This has been an ongoing problem for a long time that we have not solved. Right? The reality is, is we have an opportunity right now to do that, and we're choosing not to. So when you vote no on this, you're voting no to fixing the cross-subsidy issue. I just want to make sure we're all clear about that. We have a chance to fix it, and we're choosing not to. Thank you. The committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain. No. Senator Eichhorn. No. Senator Weaker. Yes. Senator Coleman. No. Senator Swadzinski. Yes. Senator Duckworth. No. Senator Isaacson. Yes. Senator Kunesh. Yes. Senator Newman. No. Seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Any additional discussion, amendments, or otherwise? Senator Swadzinski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have the A-12 amendment. Senator Swadzinski offers the A-12 amendment. If staff could please pass that out to the amendment. Um, I'm just going to parrot a lot of what Senator Isaacson just <coughs> said, I guess. Um, but this is more specifically dealing with the cross-subsidy for English language learners. The federal government at one point said... Um, mandated special education and they said they promised to fund 40 percent of of that bill so to speak and they've come through at about 14 to 17 percent uh any somewhere between 14 17 percent every year and so states are are on the hook for making up that 23 25 percent difference and senator isaacson gave some pretty um, telling numbers for uh, all of our districts in, that are in the, um, for some of us, over $10 million, but it sounded like most of those numbers were between eight, nine, ten million dollars $10 million. That's a lot of money. And so my bill specifically deals with English language learner cross subsidy and but I think we're um, I agree with Senator Isaacson they've there's a lot going on right now we've got a nine billion dollar surplus and if boy since I've been an elected official the one you um, theme I've heard from school boards and school administrators across the state is that can you guys do something about the cross subsidy it's killing us as a school district so I hope that one of these bills on dealing with cross-subsidy, I do believe we've got a, a few here, um, makes it um, out of this committee, and I ask for a roll call vote. Thank you. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Have you had an opportunity to see the A12, Senator Chamberlain? Okay, to the A12. Uh, same comments apply to this as the previous one. All right, so additional, additional discussion? So, no, no. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadzinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Nope. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? No. Seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Additional discussion or amendments to the bill? Chair, I have the A22, please. A22. 
Senator Kunish offers the A22 amendment. Staff, if you could please pass it out. If you could please start telling us about it. Yes, um, members, this is the ELL, English as a, a Second Language Cross Subsidy, and it indexes it. We know that um, over time, inflation has played havoc on our school budgets, and just as you've heard, uh, either neither our federal government nor our state government has kept up on their obligation to fully fund our public education. And oftentimes it is our EL students, our special ed kids that are feeling the brunt. Uh, English language learner expenses are expensive and there's no exception, but this is an investment in our future. It brings, uh, this bill would bring more ELL uh, instruction, instructors into the classroom. And we need to make sure that we are not putting additional burdens on our school districts when they are already uh, really suffering with the lack of uh, funding from our state government. So this uh, bill would index the ELL cross-subsidy to inflation and recognize and compensate the districts for the rising cost. Members, um, Right now, our students, our ELL students, the state government invests $704 per pupil. That's $704 for their basic EL education. And then they uh, receive an additional $250 if they qualify for other special um, things. This has not been risen. They have, we have not raised this rate since 2004. So that's 18 years. So when we talk about uh, why things aren't working or when, when Chair Chamberlain says um, we can't fix things, well, we actually can fix things. We can throw money at, at these uh, problems and um, we have to start somewhere. I'll just wait for Chair Chamberlain to sit down so he can hear what I'm saying. I had to get a cough drop. Thank you. Um, so as I was saying, we can fix the problems. Uh, 30, $30 million towards a literacy program is a great start. But we also have so many other needs here in our schools and across the state. And this is one of those bills that we don't have to go back every single year or every single two years and ask for additional money for our English learners. And so members, I would ask that you support this uh, A22 amendment. Uh, making sure that we are intentionally investing in the students of the future, of our workforce of the future, and providing what would probably be considered an equitable education for all of our, our learners. And I ask for a roll call. Roll call requested. Roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain to the A22. Yeah, regrettably, we offered that. I believe we offered this last year, and it was not accepted. But um, no. Same reasons as before. Additional discussion to the A22. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunish? Yes. Senator Newman? Seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Additional comments, discussion, or amendments to the bill? Senator Swadzinski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have the A23 amendment. Senator A38. Swadzinski. Senator Swadzinski offers the A38 Bingo. amendment. If staff would please pass that out, go ahead and uh, tell us about your amendment. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, during my teaching career, there was nothing more frustrating than that. Uh, that, and it's already been referenced tonight, that day in March or April when the, some of the more youthful, enthusiastic, exuberant first-year teachers get that 
horrible notification called the pink slip because the schools just don't have any idea yet what funding will come out of this, um, out of the legislature, and they've got to be notified by, I do believe the date is May 1st or April 1st, and we usually don't get our bills done until uh, till the end of May, as you all know. And so what this um, amendment would do is it would tie the E-12 funding formula to inflation and the consumer price index from there on after. Uh, since 2003, we just haven't kept up with inflation, and I do believe we're 16 percent behind where we were in 2003 with respect to educational funding, and this bill doesn't necessarily fix that issue, which is another issue for another day, but it would from here on out tie um, the, um, the funding formula to inflation. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank Senator you. Chamberlain? This uh, tying things to inflation is a very bad idea, no matter uh, what uh, budget area you're talking about. So, uh, no, please. Senator Isaacson. So, one thing that, if I may disagree with the chair, one thing that tying things to inflation does is it makes it so the bills are less political and we're not having a political fight over funding every, every uh, budgeting year. That's uh, really important. And the reality is, is that <clears throat> when you look at uh, um, the, the way in which inflation works, I mean, one thing it is, is it's complex, right? I've seen research that shows that education inflation increases at a rate higher than regular inflation, <laughs> national inflation or the national average of inflation. And so, our, especially when you look at some of the technological advancements schools need to make. And so there's just a real opportunity to once again address one of the problems we're dealing with with education. And I hope that we can uh, absolutely pass this amendment. Thank you. Any additional discussion to the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the A38 amendment say aye. Yeah, I, did I ask for a roll call? You did not. Um, may I ask for a roll call? Or is it too late? I'm being told by staff it's too late. You need to ask before the call for the vote. Is okay, asked. I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm guessing the result will be the same. Uh, all those in favor say aye. All, all those opposed, the motion does not prevail. Any additional comments, dis discussion, or amendments to the bill? Seeing is no additional? Or we'll call for vote on the bill. There are plenty left. Um, I would like to um, submit the A37. Senator Kunish offers the A37 amendment. Staff, if you could please pass that out and go ahead and tell us about your amendment. Um, this uh, amendment is increasing the Teachers of Color Act. It is, again, something that is very near and dear to me. Uh, this uh, act is uh, a very comprehensive approach to increasing the teacher shortage that we have been facing, but increasing it uh, intentionally through uh, making sure that, that we have teachers of color, uh, our Latinx teachers, our black teachers, our uh, indigenous teachers. Uh, students appreciate and they do better when they have somebody in front of them that maybe looks like them, speaks their, um, their language, maybe has many of the same life experiences. And I think we've heard this over and over from those that, are, uh, that come to testify, how important it is that um, those students have somebody that they can relate to. And so members, this bill is a comprehensive bill. It uh, starts with, um, with the recruiting of teachers of color. It provides supports through their um, educational uh, and licensing uh, practices. It uh, provides mentors and um, support during those student teaching months. I remember when I um, was going to school for my teaching degrees, I was actually in my mid-30s. I was a single mom and uh, going to school on the weekends. And when it came time for me to do my student teaching, uh, I couldn't work anymore. I was doing family daycare, and so I couldn't provide that daycare anymore and had to rely on my uh, savings to support myself and my three children. And then lo and behold, come January, the government went on shutdown and I wasn't able to get my teaching license. 
and I ended up going on a public assistance. I was um, one of those welfare moms where I received food stamps and MFIP and um, was one of the original folks for Minnesota Care. This bill would provide resources to help parents, to help people through those months when they can't be teaching or working full time and, and doing that. And then we know that within five years is that very crucial time period where teachers either decide to continue the profession or often drop out. Those are hard years of adjusting. It's teaching is not easy. It's exhausting. It's uh, emotionally taxing, it's physically taxing. Uh, we work long, hard hours, often time at home and on the weekends, and, and get no additional compensation. And so it's absolutely vital that um, we provide those resources, and this bill does just that. And knowing that um, having somebody there to mentor you, to help you through those hard troubles, uh, is also really so important. And so this bill, which we have been working on long and hard, and every now and then we get a little bit of it here and a little bit of there, um, is really crucial to attracting and retaining teachers. Again, an investment in our future. And um, we can do something um, that focuses on results because we know this will provide results. And so members, I would ask for your support on this amendment and I would ask for a roll call. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain. Um, last year we had a very robust TOC proposal in our final bill. We all supported it. It was a good idea. Um, there are several components to it. Uh, I also protected Tier 1 and Tier 2, which many people keep trying to change, which would eliminate 25%. 25% of those teachers in Tier 1 and Tier 2 are um, teachers of color. And by changing what they wanted to change, to propose to change, would have eliminated 25% all those teachers of color from the system or made it very difficult. So we had a robust package last year with TOC. We fully support. It's in the bill. It's at work now. We even gave money to uh, black men teach so they could uh, accelerate. And um, finally, we protected Tier 1 and Tier 2 from those people who would want to take that out and adjust it. That would remove a lot of teachers of color from the system. So uh, we don't need this this year, no. Additional discussion on the A37. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain. No. Senator Eichhorn. No. Senator Weaker. Yes. Senator Coleman. No. Senator Swadzinski. Yes. Senator Duckworth. Nope. Senator Isaacson. Yes. Senator Kunish. Yes. Senator Newman. Seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Additional questions, comments, discussion to the underlying bill. Uh, Senator Isaacson. I move the A7 amendment. Senator Isaacson moves the A7 amendment. Staff, please pass the A7 out. Senator Isaacson, to your amendment. Earlier this year, I had the chance to visit a full-service community school, and uh, I was uh, gobsmacked at um, what they were able to accomplish with the funding that they received. Uh, it was nothing short of a miracle for their community, a miracle for students that we traditionally think are at risk, uh, and provided a kind of support for those students that are, that's hard to understand in today's teaching environment. As somebody who was a graduate of an alternative teaching school, a school that taught as an alternative school, after being a high school dropout, I can tell you that at a school like this existed when I was a high schooler, uh, I probably would have graduated from that school. Uh, it was amazing. And so what this bill does is it provides uh, support for full service community schools uh, now and ongoing. And I want to be clear about what we're talking about here. Uh, <clears throat> what full service community schools do that I think is important, and I think uh, anybody who understands education and who's been an educator knows that <clears throat> one of the biggest things you can do as a teacher is to meet the child or the student where they're at and then help them get to where they want to go because we all know they're not at the same spot in our classrooms, right? They're all in different places. And so what full service community schools do is that approach, not just with education, but with other opportunities of what can be helpful to them, whether it's medical, uh, uh, dentists, uh, mental health, you name it. It provides 
uh, a lot of supports in places where we don't have those supports. And, and I think that one area that I've agreed with my friends across the aisle on has been some of the concerns about the equity gap, some of the concerns about uh, the way in which we don't have uh, similar teaching for folks in similar districts in terms of their supports. And what this bill does is provides a way to solve that problem. And so I hope that that's something we can think about. I realize that the, the funding amount probably disqualifies it given the non-targets you were given, but I'll say that uh, it's a real opportunity and, and will be the future of education, and Minnesota has a chance to get in front of that. So uh, I'd love it if you supported this, uh, this amendment, uh, and I ask for a roll call. Roll call requested on the A7. Roll call granted Senator Chamberlain to the A7. Uh, this has never been discussed in committee. It's a wide-ranging and broad topic and issue would, that would have significant impacts. And um, it's not ready for this year. Any so. additional discussion? Senator Weger. Oh, thank you. Mr. Chair, I partially agree, agree with Senator Chamberlain that it's wide, it's, it's very broad in its impact, and it makes a significant impact in terms of its results. It's proven you can close the opportunity gap with high quality full service schools that provide the services that students need. Uh, think of the teacher when the students come in. If a student uh, does not have food security, if the student is dealing with issues at home, if they're not healthy, if there's dental issues, the, the mental health. The full service school early on is all about identifying issues, looking at prevention, early involvement, parental involvement for those full service schools that have been rolled out. They close that achievement gap and there's test scores. We've been invited. Uh, you know, we have put uh, money. I've been a previous author of this. Uh, we've had invitations to visit these sites. They work. Thank you, Senator Isaacson. Senator Isaacson. Oh. Okay. So uh, the one thing that I didn't mention, I want to mention that I think uh, particularly speaks to some of the focus that uh, our chair has put on this year is the, is the involvement and uh, engagement of parents in this process in a full service community school. Um, they are intimately engaged in the education from beginning to end. They are engaged and encouraged to be part of the process and a part of the school. And so I think what makes this model so successful is, is precisely some of the things I've heard in this committee earlier this year because what it does is it engages that parent to be a partner in that process. And I think that's really a part of what makes this a, a good opportunity. And I, I think I asked for a roll call if I didn't ask again. Uh, but I, uh, I really hope we can look at this. And it sounds like there was a budding moment of optimism with the chair today uh, and talking about how this is something to be looked at. And I hope if we can't do this now, uh, we can take a look at this going forward. I think it's really important. Thank you. A roll call had already been requested and granted. Thank you, sir. So we're, you're covered there, Senator Isaacs. Any additional discussion to the A7? Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadzinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? Seeing four yeses and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Additional comments, discussion, or questions? Commis um, Senator Kunish. Chair, I have the A32 amendment, please. Senator Kunish offers the A32 amendment. Uh, staff, please pass the amendment out to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is the ethnic studies graduation requirement. I think that um, it really goes almost hand in hand with uh, the civics requirement, but this up allows for a broader global um, approach to how our society works within um, the world itself. There are, are a lot of tough issues going on in our world and in our society today. And uh, through ethnic studies, um, through looking at how our, um, our uh, communities reflect the world, 
as a nation, uh, recognizing the complexity and our divisions is a really important way of creating uh, citizens of, the, of today and of the future. But our students absolutely need the right tools to unravel the, un, um, the often very messy reality that is around us. And by focusing on the socially constructed categories that really lie in the heart of the American experience, we can understand how we got to where we are today. There's a real connection between cause and effect. How does one action uh, cause a future reaction? I would say that um, by not funding a lot of the things that we're requesting here today, um, there is a really strong cause and effect if we're not going to continue to invest in our EL and our students. What, what, what can you expect? If your house is falling apart around you and you need new windows and new doors and there's holes in the floor um, and you say, well, I'm only gonna fix my refrigerator today because there's no use throwing money at it. This isn't the way to do it. But I believe that ethnic studies is an incredible discipline that is really going to address many of the issues that, that we are confronted with every day. And it gives the students the opportunity and the tool to study and research and discuss and discover um, all of the complexities of, of what America is and what the role of America should be and is in our global world. Look at what's happening at the, in the Ukraine and how America is responding to that halfway across the world. What are we doing to make sure that we have a world where everybody thrives? And within this kind of a, a, a program of, of ethnic studies for all, especially if we are able to look at each other and look at our unique communities around us, we can build the kind of community, the kind of state where all of us are happy and healthy and thrive. And so members, I would ask that you support the ethnic studies graduation requirement and I ask for a roll call. Roll call requested. Roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain to the A32. Um, this is a large mandate on the schools, on the department. Uh, we certainly appreciate the concern and the interest in this issue um, very much, but there's a lot here. Um, just a big, big mandate on schools and on the department. No. Additional discussion on the A32. Senator Swadzinski. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I support um, the amendment that Senator Kunish brought forward. And I just want to say, I, I would ask all the members of the committee, in fact, all 201 legislators, go to your high schools and ask the, ask the students if they think this ethnic studies is a good idea, because the resounding answer will be, uh, and I know this based on firsthand going to the three high schools in my district, they, they think this is just something that we should they should have is ethnic studies because they all get, uh, the youth of America right now um, know the world they're entering um, is a um, pretty diverse place and they want to be as prepared as possible for it and I think um, we shouldn't get in the way and we should encourage it and offer classes like this that'll help them. So, Senator Isaacson. Just uh, two days ago, I was uh, lecturing in my uh, intercultural communication course on global economic transformations. And one of the things we talk about is uh, the realities of how things change over time and that I was reflecting on in my classes, which were mostly white when I first started teaching, are now mostly not white, and how as we see diversity becoming more and more the norm every day, uh, this is something where we have a real opportunity to address some of those things and, and put it in a proper perspective and use it as a learning moment rather than seeing it as something that, uh, well, it'll just happen or it's fine or we have it all every time so we don't have to worry about it because it's going on around us. I mean, really using this as a learning moment in our classes and I think that's a real opportunity we shouldn't pass up. So I hope we'll consider uh, voting on this. Thank you. Additional discussion to the A32. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadzinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Nope. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? 
Seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Additional, Senator Weger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I offer the A35 amendment. And Senator Weger offers call. the A35 amendment. Roll call requested. Roll call granted. Staff, if you could please pass out the A35 to your amendment, Senator yes. Weger. Mr. Chair, the A35 addresses adult basic education. It uh, modifies the growth factor in determining the aid. Uh, I understand there's no fiscal note in talking to nonpartisan fiscal staff. Uh, adult basic education, as I'm sure you're all aware, serves adults who want to improve their lot to, for getting a job. And there's 65,000 people or so that are doing this. Uh, we want to provide additional opportunity. That's the intent. This could be someone uh, coming from Ukraine as well. A lot of immigrants have participated in this program. Uh, if you ever have a chance, visit your local school where it might be happening. Go to a graduation ceremony. Uh, we did not have a chance for a hearing on this this year, but uh, it's a great uh, program. I strongly uh, encourage you to support it. Senator Chamberlain, have you received the 835? I have. Okay, um, to the amendment. Of course, we do support adult basic education, like we do many other things, but um, this is not the year I have not, we have not heard this in committee, so no. Additional discussion to the 835. Senator Isaacson. Uh, I'm frustrated to hear us continue to say we haven't heard it in committee when the reason we have in committee is because you didn't want to hear it in committee. And so I, I get that's that. prerogative of the chair, as it was pointed out in an earlier meeting, and I, I totally understand that. Uh, however, uh, that's a frustrating answer when we know we have things to solve, and committee is where the work of the legislature gets its work done. Which is a little redundant, <coughs> but I think you know what I mean. So I'm, I, I wish we would uh, pass this. Thank you. Additional discussion to the A35. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weger? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadzinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? Nope. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? No. Seeing four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Additional amendments, Mr. discussion? Chair? Senator Isaacson? I offer the A27 amendment. Senator Isaacson offers the A27 amendment. Would the staff please pass that out and to your amendment while they're doing so? For those of you that are viewing on TV or in the crowd, I hope you know this is the highlight of the evening right here, <laughs> as I am very excited about this amendment. It is the Career and Technical Education Amendment, and it actually comes from uh, my friend and colleague, Senator Dames, although I'm not sure he knows I'm taking his bill and offering it as an amendment. I want to be really clear about something. Uh, when I started the legislature 10 years ago, one of the, the glaring things that I saw was the way in which we have di divested or disinvested or whatever you want to say in career and technical education. Uh, it's just a tragedy. I go back to my dad who owned, who was a former shop teacher and owned a metal manufacturing shop telling me that in the 80s that our outsourcing of our manufacturing and those kind of jobs are going to cause us problems in America down the road. And I now look at this irony, what it is ironic to me, that we have this continual shortfall of workers and we actually have the manufacturing jobs, right? We still have some here in Minnesota, yet because of our disinvestment or whatever you want to say in, in career and technical education, we have an entire generation of people who grew up without having the opportunities of a shop class or a woodworking or small engine repair. Uh, that just wasn't a focus. And even if it was offered, it wasn't valued, right? And that's the second part that I think is really important is it wasn't valued. And that's part of what the problem is. And I, I have to ask uh, Senator Duckworth if he'd yield for a question. Senator Duckworth? Sure. Senator, Senator Duckworth, Duckworth is, will yield. Senator Isaacson? Uh, much like uh, future Senator Grunhagen, uh, were you ever serving on the school board? <laughs> Senator Duckworth. Uh, I don't know who you referenced in your question, but yes, I have <laughs> served on the school board. I, Senator Isaacson? Well, if you're lucky, you'll get to see him next year. Uh, <laughs> and so I ask that because uh, one thing I remember, I had a bill that audited the state, uh, trying to get the state of um, uh, career and technical education across the school districts. And one thing that Lakeville had at one point, and I don't know if they still do, but had a molding 
class and a molding uh, area they could work with students on aluminum and plastics. Is it still there? Senator Duckworth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it is. We have even more these days. We've uh, spent a lot of time investing in STEM so our students have these opportunities. That is exciting. Senator Isaacson. Sen thank you so much. And that really kind of makes my point here where I want to go with this. Roseville School Districts also has an amazing program, and so does White Bear Lake. And what do those three schools uh, have in common? A really great tax base, right? They can afford to do it. So now we have continuing problems with achievement, achievement opportunities because we're not funding this across the state. Right, because we don't have school, we have school districts that don't have the base or the willpower or even the finances to have that kind of a program, but some of the bigger, more wealthy schools are able to do that. And so this gives us an opportunity, and I hope that we take this opportunity seriously because funding career and technical education literally will change the way we do business in Minnesota. It provides for a broader tax base, more people working, and creates and, and brings more businesses into Minnesota. It is just a win all the way across the board. And I think that. I don't know many Republicans or Democrats that think that having career and technical education as a part of our uh, curriculum or a part of our high school or junior high uh, would be a bad idea. And now I, I understand and I anticipate a, a statement from uh, the esteemed chair that we didn't hear this in committee, so I hope I can save him the breath on that one. But I do think that there's an opportunity here and we should take a serious look at that and I hope that's something we'll consider moving forward. Thank you. Senator Duckworth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I think there's there's no doubt uh, that programs like this have value in school districts all across the state, uh, and I think you'll find that they exist in a wide range of communities, and so uh, I don't want to flippantly discount any districts out there, especially those that maybe don't have the sort of tax base that was alluded to that have prioritized programs like these and are providing them for kids and students so they can better themselves and they can have opportunities. So for those districts out there that have done the work to do that, we appreciate it and we hope you continue to provide those opportunities for your students. Senator Chamberlain. Yes, of course, we do support these initiatives and these ideas and programs. Uh, we did hear something very, very similar to this. Senator Coleman has a, had a bill, it's, I believe it's in finance or the floor, do you recall where? Higher ed. In higher ed, Mr. Chair. Senator to higher ed. So her bill addresses this. Um, so we are uh, aware of it, and it's on the agenda. Senator Isaacson. No, no to oh. this uh, amendment. No to this amendment. All right, Senator Isaacson. I just, uh, you know, I share some of the sentiments Senator Duckworth shared about uh, the ability of some districts to do that. Uh, what we don't have is uh, many districts that don't have that possibility. And I think if you look at the work research I've seen, you'll see that far more do not than do and that there is a hugely, uh, a huge difference in the economic opportunity in places that do have them and places that don't, and I asked for a roll call. I was just asking staff if you had or not, because I didn't know, should have assumed. Roll call requested on the A27, roll call granted. The committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadzinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? Nope. Senator Isaacson? Joyfully, yes. Senator Kunish? Yes. Senator Newman? No. There being four ayes and five nays, the motion does not prevail. Senator Weger? Mr. Chair, I offer the A36 and request a roll call. Senator Weger offers the A36 roll call requested. Roll call granted. Staff, if you would please pass out the A36 to your amendment. Senator Weger? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, earlier we had a very good proposal which uh, would allow a fund transfer for the Burnsville Egan Savage School District and a great display of bipartisanship. Uh, uh, I believe we had Senator Duckworth and Senator Port uh, presenting it, and I thought this is an omnibus bill and this would be a good place to put it. So, Senator Chamberlain, have you so, received the amendment yet? I, I have it. It's already been addressed here, and it's, uh, I think we sent it to floor. Where is it at? Mr. Chair. Senator Duckworth. Uh, Senator Weger, I very much do appreciate you bringing this up. I still am pursuing this. It's waiting to be heard in finance. I intend to bring it to the floor so it can pass on its own. So I do appreciate you uh, still continue to have awareness of this bill. Additional discussion, Senator uh, Weger. Well, Mr. Chair, I... And, you know, Senator Duckworth, you know, respectfully, a lot of times we, you know, just when we feel really strongly on something, we may want to 
provide other you know, vehicles for it, and uh, at the end of the majority party, you might be on a good path there, but this is an omnibus bill, and usually fund transfers could be included, so you know, I would hope that could be. I, I think Senator Port would probably feel better if it was a part of an omnibus bill, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, Senator uh, Duckworth. I guess I would say, I mean, you, you make fair points, but I would feel better uh, about me being able to control it and get it through and hopefully passed off the floor with her help and your help rather than it potentially uh, going to a conference committee and maybe not seeing it come back. So points well taken. I intend to keep uh, pushing for this bill to see it pass on its own. Additional discussion. Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Oh, did you call? He did? Okay. You called for a roll call, Senator Weger? Yes. Okay. Roll call requested. Roll call granted. The committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weger? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunish? Yes. Senator Newman? There being four no's and five yeses, the motion does not prevail. Senator Weger. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I offer the A9 amendment and ask for a roll call. Senator Weger offers the A9 amendment, roll call requested, roll call granted, to the A9. Yes. Staff uh, could please pass that out. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We had an excellent bill presented by Senator Coleman. I believe it was 3231 for the math core. I've uh, chief authored this in the past, and I believe there's studies that also show a early proficiency in math is going to be a good indicator for reading proficiency, uh, by the way. And why not add to our investment for reading core, which is also validated with uh, many studies. So this provides an additional boost on the, the key message for literacy, uh, uh, proficiency, uh, the whole package. So urge your support. Senator Chamberlain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff, where is this bill? Uh, do we lay this over? Is it over in finance? Staff is checking. This bill was laid over, Senator Chamberlain. So we, we've heard it. It's still alive in the committee. So no on this amendment, no on this amendment. Additional discussion Wait, to the excuse A9, me. Senator Weger. It's just clarification. It was laid over, correct? That is correct, Senator Weger. And... Senator Chamberlain, did I hear you say it was laid over? And is this our markup, or is this the time where we're putting together our omnibus bill? No to Senator this amendment. Senator Chamberlain, okay. Any additional discussion to the A9? Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weger? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? No. Seeing four no's and five yeses, the motion does not prevail. Mr. Chair, I have the Senator A Kunish. A6, please. Um, Senator and Kunish offers the A6. If staff could please pass that out <coughs> to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is uh, sort of following up on what Senator Weger has just uh, proposed, and this is to create a tutoring corp um, program because we know that our students, uh, if at any time have been challenged at the most, it is now. Uh, families with greater uh, financial resources, um, they, they have access to tutors and support for their students. Unfortunately, there are many families that don't have those resources available, and the cost of high quality uh, tutoring is totally out of reach for for too many of our families. And so what this uh, bill does, it proposes a tutoring core, and it would utilize student teachers, those teachers that are in the process of uh, uh, studying for their teaching licensure, to during the summertime work with students um, 
to bring them up to snuff. Uh, uh, this morning I met with uh, a handful of mothers from across the, the metro area and um, they spoke about the, the, the challenge of uh, getting extra attention for their student and, and the cost of, of tutoring. We know that um, student achievement in uh, in the past few years has really gone down in 2021 to 22. Um, that uh, achievement was lower compared to a typical year with larger relative declines in math. So there, were, there was more decline in math between nine and 11 percent points than reading, which went down three to seven percent uh, points. Achievement is lower for all student groups in the fall of 2021. However, our historically marginalized students and students in high poverty schools have really, really authentically been disproportionately affected, and particular those elementary schools that were studied. And I think Chair Chamberlain's um, facts around literacy will prove that. But the decline in math achievement were greater than reading achievement. And while reading is very much important, literacy is important, um, there are many other skills that go into creating a well-rounded uh, student and, and um, education. So what this would do is provide those teachers uh, who would be able to provide individual support and help close the gaps that have widened over these past two years. We know that our teachers are overburdened and these tutors would provide that individual support while teachers keep the overall instruction moving forward. And so members, I would ask for um, your support in um, this amendment and I ask for a roll call. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain to the A6. Um, this has not been heard in this committee. It's a mandate on the Department of Education. Um, this is, this bill we are presenting is omnibus appropriation for literacy. So um, I know Senator Kunish will talk about literacy in here. We do have a reading core and the math core is still out there. So we do have tutoring available as well. But this year, right now, this is a literacy Omnibus appropriations bill, so no. Additional discussion to the A6. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunish? Yes. Senator Newman? Seeing four yeses and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Additional amendments. Senator Weger. Yes, uh, Ms. Chair, I offer the A33 and request a roll call vote. Senator Weger offers the A33. Roll call requested. Roll call granted. Staff, if you'd please pass out the A33 to your amendment. Senator Weger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This addresses climate justice, and it would ha have an expectation requirement. Um, the problem is that you know, we haven't had any hearings. And this is a proposal that was developed by a number of student leaders throughout Minnesota. And uh, thankfully it's had some momentum in the other body, but uh, I'm a co-author on it. Uh, and it provides for a number of things for uh, you know, climate justice instruction. Uh, you can look in here in terms of some of the specifics. There would be consultation with various groups, stakeholders. Uh, you know, this is real, the impact of climate change. Uh, it's uh, one of the most important issues on the planet. And uh, I, I can assure you that you know, many students would you know, welcome this as well as uh, parents. So uh, I urge your support. Senator Chamberlain to the A33. Uh, again, this is a literacy omnibus appropriation bill. Uh, so this climate justice uh, mandate on the districts and on the uh, department uh, is not a good idea this year. No. Additional discussion to the A33. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Senator Kunesh? Yes. 
Senator Newman. No. There being four yeses and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Additional, Senator Isaacson. I would like to offer the A29 amendment. Senator Isaacson offers the A29 amendment. Staff, if you could please pass that out. To your amendment, Senator Isaacson. Well, Mr. Chair, since I've not had much luck with vinegar, I'm going to try a little honey here and see if this works out better, uh, see if I get any movement on this at all. Uh, as you know, Mr. Chair, oops, I'm going to wait a second because it actually relates to him. <coughs> Sorry, Senator Isaacson, you guys are burning my battery. I got to see if they got a charger for me. Well, that means I'm at least doing part of my job right, I guess, you know, in the they minority, enjoying life. Uh, Mr. Chair, as you know, uh, you offered part of this earlier this year uh, when you, uh, I thought, had one of my favorite bills of the year focusing on after-school programming for kids, and we had a nice meeting in your office, and you were very clear with me that, you know, we didn't know if it was going to make the list or not, and I totally respect that, but uh, I've added to your bill uh, some, of the some of the extra money I wanted to, s to appropriate for after school programming for kids with special needs and disabilities. And so uh, I'll tell you that um, the more we give kids opportunity to experience things in our schools, whether it's competitive sports or just an opportunity to socialize, or if you have a, a special a child with special needs, an opportunity to become more social, making friends and having the fuller school experience, the better off they are as adults in life. Uh, this amendment would, you know, uh, Mr. Chair, I would appeal to you and, and other Mr. Chair, uh, I would appeal to you that for just $10 million, uh, we can change a lot of kids' lives here. And uh, it, it's a paltry amount uh, for the amount of good it's going to do. Uh, and it's going to provide some opportunities across the state. And what I like about it is that the school districts that already do this don't have to worry about it. And what it does is it gives school districts that don't have this opportunity a chance to become uh, more active, but especially focusing not just on regular school after school programs, but also the programs for people with special needs, which I think is so vital. Uh, and I'd love to think that this could be a friendly amendment, although I suspect it might not be, so I will ask for a roll call. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain. Um, uh, we always support improving and reforms in these areas, but we didn't this is an extensive bill we didn't hear in committee and when i looked through it briefly i think there's more mandates on the on the department to do things so uh, we're always looking for new ideas and reforms but that wasn't here heard here it's a large bill and it looks like another mandate so no mr chair senator isaacson well about 75 percent of this bill was heard in committee uh when uh senator uh icorn presented it and the part that wasn't heard in committee was the part I added, uh, which was a much smaller part that just focused on helping people with special needs. So, Senator Chamberlain, we did hear about 75% of this bill. The portion that does not include, include what Senator Isaacson added did go to finance. Okay. So, All right. Well, thanks for the clarification. Oh, so, did, Mr. did? Yes, it was not laid over. I got clarification from staff that... The, the piece we heard in this committee went to finance. Well, I would love to dual track that to make sure your bill gets through, uh, Mr. Chair. I don't know if you're, that's how you feel about it. I'm guessing not, but I Previous think that- Previous comments apply. And, and I, uh, I would like to see us uh, have another discussion when it gets to the floor about working with people with special needs. I'm very serious about that all silliness aside, but I'd love to have a green vote on this. Thank you. And I think I roll called. If not, I say it again. You did. With that, seeing no additional Mr. discussion, Mr. the Chair? committee legislative assistant. Yeah, just quickly. Yes, Senator Chairman. So thanks for the correction. Um, uh, so it was heard. It's in finance. Um, so it's, in, it's active. So we don't need it here. No. Back to the committee legislative assistant. We'll take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weger? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunish? Yes. Senator Newman? No. Seeing four no's and five, seeing four yeses and five no's, the motion does not prevail. Additional amendments, discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have Senator the A8. Yes. A8. A8 A8 amendment. Senator Kunish offers the A8 amendment. <coughs> Staff, if you could please t pass that out to the amendment. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. This amendment um, allows tier one teachers to join their local union. Um, I, it's an attempt to address probably our most vulnerable staff in a school. The tier one teachers um, would be allowed to join their local union voluntarily. Of course, they are not mandated to do it, and at this time, they are not allowed to join the union. Our tier one um, teachers, as I said, are incredibly vulnerable. Their license is tied to the district, and it leaves them feeling, and we've heard this from, from those tier one teachers, that they can't say no to extra assignments, and that they are often overburdened with, um, you know, lunchroom duty, advisory to the student council, yearbook, all of the things that um, they are not getting any additional compensation for. They have no way to um, advocate for themselves for professional development and training. And um, oftentimes, I'm just going to wait and see if people are listening. Are you completed, Senator Kunish? No, I, there's just a lot of commotion, and I don't know if people are listening. Nope, there. Please continue. Okay. Um, and so um, what we would like to do with this bill is um, provide a way to advocate for them for their professional development and training, um, feeling that they are often seen as a disposable staff member. So right now, the union can't even bargain in support of the Tier 1 teachers, which leaves them very, very vulnerable to um, low wages, overwork, um, assigned to areas that they have no uh, expertise or, or skill in. And so members, um, I would ask that you would uh, uh, address this issue to the most vulnerable in our schools and allow our tier one teachers to join their, join their local union. And I would ask for a roll call. Roll call requested on the A8, roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain. No, it's, it's a big, this is a big issue. It's not as simple as one line. So, um, and this is a literacy omnibus omnibus appropriations bill, and this bill, uh, having not been heard, it also does not fit in to this literacy omnibus appropriations bill. May I just make a comment, Senator Kunish? Um, and with all due respect, Senator Chamberlain, I know you are calling this a literacy omnibus bill, but there is so much work to be done. Uh, literacy is not the only part of educating the full child. And when you limit uh, these bills and uh, information and resources to our students, you're doing our students a really serious disservice. And, uh, you know, we, we had time to hear a lot of these bills. We could have discussed them in a more, more robust way. We could have heard from a number of the stakeholders, not just from um, the, the department, but from families and teachers and school districts, superintendents, those that are most affected. And um, dismissing things because this is a literacy omnibus bill um, you know, is, is really hurting our schools. It's really hurting our communities. And we're not investing when we should be investing. And I just wish that, um, that because you decided it that, that it was going to be that and that you labeled it or titled it that um, doesn't make it a good, a good bill. It's going to affect for a long time and it's not going to be a positive effect. Senator, Senator Chamberlain. Uh, my position is still the same as previously stated, no. Additional discussion on the A8. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weger? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunish? Yes. Senator Newman? Seeing four yeses and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Senator Isaacson. Mr. Chair, I offer the A31 amendment. Senator Isaacson offers the A31 amendment. Staff, if you'd please pass that out to the A31 amendment. All 
All right. Well, uh, Senator Chamberlain, you might recognize this as it's your bill. Um, and it is something I think you did pass off to HHS uh, around lead uh, in water. Uh, uh, taking your bill had a, a no appropriation. We added the appropriation we thought. Uh, I don't think your mic is on. Oh, am I? How about now? All right. So what uh, this bill does, Senator Chamberlain, is it's your bill uh, from earlier uh, talking about fixing uh, lead in school drinking water. I think it's sitting in Senator Uckey's committee and not going anywhere. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, bring it back and maybe do something about it. Uh, and I'm open to uh, <clears throat> figuring out how we provide support, uh, whether it's this is a bill that eventually would go to a bonding bill as a cash payment versus being out of your committee. I, I'm open to any of them, but I do think you uh, genuinely had a good idea here, and I, I want to be supportive of that. And I think that this would be a good opportunity for us to address something that's a very serious issue. As we know, lead is very harmful, and uh, particularly to kids, uh, and this would give us a chance to help work on that. So I'd love to have your support, and I ask for a roll call. Roll call requested on the A31. Roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain to the A31. So we, we try to follow the committee process around here. It went to HHS because they have jurisdiction, final jurisdiction on this. We still support the bill. Still hope it moves somewhere. There's still time. But um, it's an HHS because they have to, the Department of uh, Health has to hear about it. So uh, that's where it has to be. It can't be in this bill. It's be the wrong place for it. Uh, this uh, no. Senator Isaacson. Um, Mr. Chair, Senator Chamberlain, did uh, it go to, was it Senator Uckey's committee, is that right? That is HHS. Yes, and then I want to make sure it wasn't Senator Abler's committee, so we're clear about that. And uh, it did not make it into the omnibus bill, bill there? I have not spoke to him. He, he didn't let you know that, if your bill went in or not? I vote no on the bill. Additional discussion Mr. to Mr. Chair. Senator Isaacson. Senator Chamberlain, did Senator Ducky not ask, let you know whether his, your bill was getting into his bill or not? Senator Chamberlain. My conversation with Senator Ducky are uh, my concern, but thank you for asking. I uh, say still, I oppose the bill. That additional discussion to the 831. Bizarre behavior. Seeing no additional discussion to the 831, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? No. There being four yeses and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Additional, Senator Weger. Yeah. Just a few more and we're done. Uh, I offer the A10 amendment and request a roll call. Senator Weger offers the A10 amendment. If staff can please pass that out. Roll call requested and granted to your amendment, Senator Weger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The A-10 uh, will be familiar. There was a hearing. It was Senator Chamberlain's bill, 3380, and it addressed the important subject of safe school funding. We heard from Sandy Lewandowski recalling the uh, tragedy in front of the, the fatality in front of a Richfield school. We heard testimony from school districts about additional need for revenue. And uh, again, this is the E-12 Budget Committee and we're putting together a bill and it, it belongs in, in this package. And earlier it was said, well, we've sent something separately. Well, you know, we've already put uh, ac access to menstrual products on the literacy bill uh, with the chair's approval. And you know, I, I would think that uh, addressing safe school revenue would be very appropriate at this point as well. Yes. Senator Chamberlain, to the A-10 amendment. Um, no. I, uh, I like the bill. It's my bill. Uh, we are working on things, so uh, we don't need it in this bill. This is a literacy omnibus, omnibus appropriations bill, and that is how we like it. So uh, that bill we're managing in other ways, perhaps. So. Also, Senator Chamberlain, I did uh, clarify from staff this bill was sent to the Finance Committee. Yep. So it is sitting there as well. Senator Weger? Yes, and Mr. Chair uh, and Senator Chamberlain, I don't know if this is our last bite of the apple 
uh, because uh, there are bills, including one of your Senator Icorn, that was laid over uh, for Grand Rapids. We heard from the superintendent who had noted the, you know, the deficit that they had, but uh, you know, we all agreed there should be uh, some transfer levy authority, but that was laid over. Uh, I wasn't. I thought maybe you were going to offer that as an amendment, but you know, just you know, guidance as to you know, are we going to close the curtain on budget amendments uh, after tonight? This Senator is, Chamberlain. This is the Minnesota State Legislature. You've been here much longer than I. I would defer to you for experience in how these things uh, end up in the next six weeks. Senator well, Mr. Chair, thank you, Senator Chamberlain, for you know the deferral there. I would suggest put, you know, putting some of the items that had bipartisan support, at least in an omnibus bill, including yours, Senator Eichhorn's, but, uh, as well as some of the shared ones we had earlier. Mr. Chair. Senator Chamberlain. Uh, the bill is alive and well. This particular amendment is a separate bill that I have. It's alive and well, uh, so we don't need it in this bill. So no. Thank you, Senator Chamberlain. And to my bill, it is still being worked on. There is some tweaks that need to make it the way it needs to be, and we're working with the school district on that. So it is not ready at this time anyway. So any additional discussion on the A-10 amendment? Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadzinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? No. Seeing four yeses and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Senator Isaacson. Mr. Chair, I offer the A14 amendment. Senator Isaacson offers the A14 amendment. Staff, if you could please pass out the A14 to your amendment. So this last couple of years, uh, having my my kids at home uh, for home for at home at school, and then having the experience of bringing them back, one thing became abundantly clear among many things, and that is that uh, the glue that held our school districts together in many ways was our paraprofessionals uh, and folks that were support staff in our schools. They were essential, and uh, they are not in my opinion, currently valued like they should be in our schools. Uh, we find that due to the lack of funding, it's tough for them to have full-time benefited positions. They're often not paid uh, even close to what they're worth, and it's certainly not what they're bringing back. And, and I want to be clear about this, that um, I hear about it because my kids talk about it. My kids are eight, seven, and five, and they talk about their specialists and the paras that make such a big difference in helping them learn and having an environment that's just positive and, and really providing that support to our, to our students. And I, I can't, I don't think I can possibly um, explain powerfully enough for how strong I feel about taking care of, of these folks. And I, and I feel like uh, this would give us a chance to really let those people know that they're valued and supporting uh, supporting what their worth is and what they bring to our schools. And, you know, um, if we make being a paraprofessional a job that can support a family uh, and the benefits, this changes in many ways the kind of supports and way we support our schools now. And I think that's something that we should be very seriously considering. Um, I, you know, they're real, really vital educators to the process, uh, really serving as a team with teachers. And I think that's something that we have to finally recognize as being a, a, a core component of what our schools are about. And so I hope that we can uh, come together on this amendment and vote yes, and I ask for a roll call vote. Roll call requested and granted. Senator Chamberlain to the A14. We strongly support our pairs in all, in all ways. Uh, agree with that, but this is a big bill, <laughs> and it wasn't heard in the committee. That's an extensive bill with a lot of stuff in it. And... Um, so we support the pairs, but that's a big bill, and it wasn't heard in this committee, it wasn't discussed, and we, uh, we support the committee process. It's very important to us all. So we, no, on this amendment. Senator Isaacson. Well, I uh, once again hear us uh, members in this committee talk about how much they support something, and then immediately explain why it isn't going to happen. 
Uh, well, I'm, as I was pointing out earlier today, I don't have the gavel. You do, sir. Uh, if you wanted to make a decision to show actions that backed up the words that you support these folks, you would have hearings on these or make these a part of your bill, right? Instead of making it so narrowly focused, which I think is unfortunate. And so, uh, folks, I would ask us to really consider this. This is some really important work that can be done to support our schools in a very key way that I know our teachers and our students would be very pleased about and the outcomes would be really strong. So I, I hope you can give me a green vote. And I, did I say roll call? Because I didn't say You did. It. You've been requested already. Additional <coughs> discussion to the A14. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weaker? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? No. Seeing four ayes and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Senator Isaacson? Yes, I move the A26 amendment, please. Senator Isaacson offers the A26 amendment. Staff, if you'd please pass that out to the A26. Well, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of uh, the situation we're in currently uh, with the nurses and our schools, but uh, there are hardly any requirements to having a nurse present uh, at schools, especially when the schools are smaller than 1,000 uh, 1, children. What this bill does is attempts to rectify that problem and uh, make sure that we have uh, licensed nurses uh, in our school districts supporting our students. Because right now, uh, I'm hearing stories of kids that are getting uh, medical attention from whoever, whatever adult happens to be available at that moment. And there's a real opportunity for us to take uh, a chance on, on solving some of this problem and making our schools a safer and better place and encouraging people to be in the field of being a nurse uh, in our schools and providing that essential support. This also dovetails with uh, my previous bill on full service schools and provides that opportunity as well. And so uh, I would like to think that we could take a look at this amendment and see it as a positive amendment that helps our schools, to provide supports and, uh, and, and really um, invest in the student's health, which I think we all know is super important, and I ask for a roll call. Roll call, roll call requested on the A26. Roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain, have you had an opportunity to see the amendment? Yeah, it's the first I've seen it. Um, it's a, a much larger discussion is needed for this. Yeah, you know, maybe if some people would have come to me, you know, beforehand with all this stuff, maybe it could have been something done. But you, you jump on us with this stuff at this point with a large bill, we appreciate and support the committee process for large discussions and important subjects. And uh, this is the first we've seen it, first I heard of it, all session. I haven't heard from, about it from anybody. So, um, uh, no. Additional discussion to the well, Mr. Chair, I would just point Senator out Isaacson. that many of these bills have been brought forward and not been given a hearing or been given a hearing laid over and not moved forward. So I don't know if that, I buy that excuse. But well, one more. I would hope that we could have the chance to support a bill like this. I think it would be good for our schools. So, Mr. Chair, one last comment. Yes, I'll Senator play. Chamberlain. Thank you. So thousands of bills are introduced. Any individual might introduce 20, 30, 100 bills. Well, nobody's even come to talk to me about this, almost half of these uh, proposals. So uh, thank you for the sentiment, uh, but we support the committee process. We support the deliberative process. And um, it was just brought forward now. I haven't heard about this all session. Uh, so a larger discussion it would be needed for something like this, so no. Additional discussion to the A26. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weger? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swazinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunesh? Yes. Senator Newman? No. There being four yeses and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Additional amendments or discussion? to the underlying bill. Senator Swazinski. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. I believe I have the last and the A28 <laughs> amendment. Senator Swazinski offers the A28 amendment. 
Staff, if you'd please pass that out to your amendment. Yeah, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. The amendment before you um, dis um, allows districts to apply for a student support personal aid in order to address severe shortages. Um, our, as we've heard a lot this session and uh, quite frequently tonight, our, our kids are hurting, um, and we all know that. The severe shortages um, among the uh, the employees listed on line 111, school counselors, school psychologists, school social workers, school nurses, chemical dependency counselors is becoming almost uh, an another pandemic um, in and of itself. Suicidal ideations are higher than ever. I was at um, one of the high schools in my district a couple weeks ago and I asked, um, I met with the counselors and the social worker and I asked, um, the social worker about if suicidal ideations are up. And he, he said, quote, unquote, they're through the roof. And he went on to tell me that in a normal year, he would deal with three to four students with thoughts like that. And this particular year, he's dealing with one to two a week. There's a three to four month waiting period right now for our high school students to see a therapist. Um, we need to improve these critical services that so our students can continue to grow in a safe and healthy environment. Minnesota Minnesota currently is 46th in the nation. We pride ourselves as an education state, and yet we're, as I said, 46th in the nation on high school, um, or our counselor to student ratios. Our, our schools simply are not equipped to deal with the student crisis that we're facing right now, and providing funding for support um, for the critical staff needed in order to help our students to continue to grow emotionally and academically and spiritually and physically and socially is imperative. Um, um, and so I ask for your support on this bill. Um, it's a critical investment for our kids and our future. Um, and, and again, it's an investment in Minnesota's future. And I ask for a roll call vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Roll call requested on the A28. Roll call granted. Senator Chamberlain to the A28. Yeah, so um, as I said earlier, there's a mental health bill, a large package moving through. Senate process to address some of these things and uh, some uh, school resources are in there as well. We, um, uh, school, safe school bill is still alive. The, um, our, the social media bill that we passed last year, the grant, they're still working out there to address that. Um, but more importantly, you know, and again, nobody's talked to me about this all session. So, First I heard of it was tonight, just when I got the, uh, was it, when it was handed to me. So again, we support the committee process, the deliberative process. In order to get something done, you gotta talk to people and bring them forward. You can't just drop them on the night of the on bill. So I don't know how serious uh, of an attempt it is here uh, to, to get something done, but um, nobody's talked to me all session about it or interim or anything. But we are working on student mental health issues and adult mental health issues elsewhere uh, with other bills and with other senators uh, working on those issues as well. And when they get to the floor, I would assume that you're going to give it full, your full support. But this has not been heard here, uh, and it's uh, a large bill. It needs more discussion. So, no. Additional discussion to the A28. Senator Weger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As I said in my earlier comments, we have a mental health crisis, and this was pre-COVID. And <clears throat> for you wondering, you know, why we may not have gone to your office to tell you this, or you know, as to the concern, uh, visiting any school, uh, talking to school board members, talking to parents, uh, you know, they're asking for help. Uh, the, the need for additional personnel to address this. Uh, again, this is the E-12 Budget Committee. And in addition to literacy, there are many challenges we need to address. And Senator Swadinsky, uh, his amendment is needed. I mentioned before that uh, almost all of our bills have not been heard. And you know, we get the message. You don't want to hear our bills. We put in requests for then now to act surprised that 
Yeah, that this is an issue of concern? Well, it is. It's not going to go away. Additional Mr. Chair. Senator Chamberlain. So thank you for that impassioned speech, Senator Weger. If someone was really interested in getting this passed, it would have come up to my office or met me on the floor and had a discussion. Um, so I'm willing to discuss a lot of stuff, but nobody did. Um, I have been working on these mental health issues as well as others for years. I was in this committee and other committees, and I had a heck of a time getting a bill passed last, getting a grant in the bill last year in negotiations that would address this. So I, so don't don't try to do that with me. I've been working on this for a long time, and um, there were people bucking it and pushing back on it. So um, mental health has been on front and center, uh, and, and it has been this year, it has been for the last couple of years. And it wasn't easy getting it done last year in the omnibus bill, but we got it in there. So um, there's another bill running through the Senate that will help deal with uh, student issues. We still have a school safety bill sitting in finance. And uh, this hasn't been heard here. Nobody talked to me about it. Uh, so no. Additional discussion to the 828? Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain? No. Senator Eichhorn? No. Senator Weger? Yes. Senator Coleman? No. Senator Swadzinski? Yes. Senator Duckworth? No. Senator Isaacson? Yes. Senator Kunash? Yes. Senator Newman? No. Seeing four yeses and five noes, the motion does not prevail. Is there any other discussion, dis questions, anything to the underlying bill? Senator Isaacson? Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we've had a, a really nice rundown uh, of what could have been what we could have solved for the students and teachers and parents of Minnesota today. Uh, you know, this bill is an example of what happens when you have a failure to act. And I don't know that it's because Senator Chamberlain wasn't given the green light to spend more money and that's the problem or uh, what the focus was, but this, this bill is a failure to act. It, it is a solution to a very specific problem that I totally agree is an issue, but doesn't in any way take on the myriad of other problems that we have, right? Uh, today, my friends in the GOP majority uh, voted against paying back the cross subsidy, expanding substance abuse education, expanding library and center media literacy, expanding increasing teachers of color as they voted against an ethnic studies requirement, math and reading core, tutoring core, climate justice education, they voted against safe funding in schools, expanding licenses, licensed nurses in our schools, Allow, supporting paraprofessionals and allowing tier one uh, teachers to join, licensed teacher join the union, and they voted against full service schools. I, much like Senator Weger, uh, am a bit incredulous to hear now a sudden willingness to have, we just spoke to him earlier when all indications in the past have indicated that was never a, an opportunity, or many of these bills were given the opportunity and just weren't heard, to say that we have we're going to have this discussion, and we finally bring it forth, as Senator Weger has talked about, as an opportunity for us to voice our, our concerns when we finally have that chance. In the omnibus bill, which is supposed to be a bill that's a conglomeration of how we're going to address the needs right now in Minnesota's education. And, and we have not done that at all, with the exception of one part, one very specific part. And so, I have, uh, you know, for years been trying to sound the warning, warning sounds of, of what we have when we disinvest in education. The crisis in mental health, the way in which we do special education, career and technical education, there are many things that we have to address in Minnesota that we need to fix that go way beyond literacy. And while literacy is an important part, it's not the entire thing. And I'm, I am hopeful that somewhere between now and when this bill sees the floor, we can continue some of those dialogues and maybe find ways to have some solutions. Or when this bill goes to conference committee, that some of these solutions are available from the House and that we can take them to try to provide some supports. I am utterly disappointed in how short this bill falls in taking care of our students and uh, I just, uh, it just, it's just heartbreaking, and I will be a no. 
Additional discussion to the Senate file. Senator Duckworth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a question for uh, Senator Chamberlain. <coughs> Senator, or your question. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Chamberlain, uh, for some reference and for some context, were you the author of and did you negotiate a bill that was passed last session? Senator did Chamberlain. Did Sorry, I thought you were done. Nope, that's okay. I'm sure you did a lot of them last session or last year. Uh, that increased education spending uh, 1.2 billion dollars above and beyond what is already budgeted for education, and have those funds go directly to schools so they can decide how to meet the needs of their students and their education. Senator Chamberlain. Mr. Chair, Senator Duckworth. Yes. Additional discussion on Senate File 4113. Senator Duckworth. I would just ask for a roll call vote. Okay. Roll call <coughs> requested on the underlying Senate file 4113 as amended. Roll call granted. Additional discussion to Senate file 4113. Seeing none, the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Mr. Chair. Uh, Se uh, Senator Chamberlain. Uh, I, I'm sorry I risk extending this at all, but. Um, yeah, you might want some closing comments too yeah. if we're going to go there first. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I got used to just hammering through this, so. So um, you're right, uh, this, was, this bill is a result of failure to act. It's been a failure of the administration after administration to act against reading. It's been a failure of Pelsby. It's been a failure of a lot of pieces along the line. Parents came to me in 2013 to talk about dyslexia and it's morphed into literacy. It was a bipartisan effort then. It has remained so throughout. Parents drove this, then educators got on board. So you're right, it was a failure to act. Thousands of teachers were left uneducated and not knowing how to teach reading. Hundreds of thousands of kids weren't reading. So yeah, we decided to act. We decided to look for results, and that's what this bill represents. Years of struggle from parents and from educators who said they needed something different. So we did. We said, we're gonna focus on literacy 110%. That's what this bill is. And last year we kept almost all the mandates out, record funding. So this year was a time to act on literacy. For the first time last year, we not only did we pass this letter's grant, and the educators ate it up. We also passed the first in the nation grant for social media education to save kids' lives. So I would caution any member here to lecture me on mental health. Caution. So I had to plow through that for three and a half years. I had to pull it out of the other house. So this is a result of failure to act from a lot of people, for a lot of reasons, for a lot of politics. So we're acting for the kids and for the educators. No mandates, reducing mandates, getting kids to read so they don't have to go to special education. So they don't want to go to jail. So they don't end up dropping out of school. So they can learn math. So you all had your fun tonight. Yeah, you go have a chuckle. But you weren't serious about half of this stuff. Because I hadn't seen it and nobody talked to me. So thank you, Mr. Chair and members, for your indulgence. OK, thank you, Senator Chamberlain. I'm going to make sure we get this correct. So. Senator Chamberlain moves that Senate file 4113 as amended be recommended to pass the committee and sent to the Senate Committee on Finance. There was a roll call requested and granted, so the committee legislative assistant will take the roll. Senator Chamberlain. Yes. Senator Eichhorn. Yes. Senator Weger. No. Senator Coleman. Yes. Senator Swadzinski. Yes. Senator Duckworth. Yes. Senator Isaacson. No. Senator Kunesh. No. Senator Newman. Yes. 
There being six yeses and three noes, the motion does prevail and Senate file 4113 <coughs> as amended is sent to the Senate Committee on Finance. Seeing no other bid business to come before the committee, we are adjourned.